Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at an example that deals with installment liquidation. If I say we are working an example, it means we already covered the topic in a prior session. So installment liquidation is covered in depth and explanation in the prior session. This topic is covered in advanced accounting as well as the CPA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, and tax lectures. If you like my lectures, if you're listening to me, please like them, share them, put them in the playlist. And if they're benefiting you, it means they might benefit other people. Please share the wealth. This is my Instagram account. Please follow me on Instagram. This is my Facebook account. And I do have a website. On my website, if you chose to support the channel, you can donate if you chose to. Also on my website, I do have offers for my students. And right now, Becker CPA Review is offering a thousand dollar off of the Becker bundle, the four part CPA exam. Becker is the gold standard in CPA preparation, and right now they are ha they are having an unlimited offer. That means once you sign up for the course, you have access as long as needed. So if you're planning to study for the exam, or if you are still a college student. I encourage you strongly to sign up for the course because you could use their lectures and their multiple choice and exercises as a supplement to your college studies. So let's take a look at an example that illustrate, that illustrate the installment method. We have Nick, Parker, and Rice, our partner, who share profit four, three to one. Once again, four, three to three, not to one. It means four plus three plus three equal to 10, four tenth, three tenth, and three tenth. Every time you are giving the, the information this way, let's assume you are giving four to three, to five. Well, you you add four plus three plus five, and that's uh, twelve, and it's going to be four twelve, three twelve, and fifteen twelve. This is how you determine the percentages. Parker, one of them, decided it would be more profitable for him to operate as a sole proprietary. So Parker wants to leave. Nelson and Rice are in agreement that life would be more rewarding if Parker were to enter into direct competition with them. And the other two partners said, you know what, we really don't want uh, Parker. Um, you know. It's okay for him to leave. Nelson and Rice made repeated attempt to buy Parker's interests. They were unable to reach an agreement. The partners mutually agree that their association should be dissolved. So basically what we're doing is we're going to be liquidating the partnership. So they agreed that it's not a good idea to stay together. A condensed balance sheet before realization of the asset is, full, is shown on the next slide. So here's where they stand. They have 5,000 in cash, 60,000 in other assets. They have 20,000 in liabilities. Nelson's capital is 20, Parker's capital is 12, and Rice's capital is, is uh, 13, and they distribute profit 40, let me go back and see how they distribute profit, 40 to 30 to 30, 40%, 30%, and 30%. So what they did is they sold their assets in installments. So they have one, two, three, four sales. The first sale, they sold it more than the book value and they generated a gain of $4,000. So copy this information down because we're going to be using this information in the next slide. They So they sold it for $16,000. This is the cash that they received. So they received cash of $16,000 and they had a gain. Okay. Uh, simply put, let, let me do the journal entry. I'm not going to do the journal entry for everyone. I'm going to show you the journal entry for two examples, for stage one and stage two, but you'll be able to follow. For stage one, what they would do, they will debit cash. They will debit cash because they sold the assets for 16000 They will credit the asset, whatever they sold, for 12000 That's the book value. And they would have a gain for 4000 then what they would do with this gain, this gain is debited, then they would allocate the gains, then they will debit the gain for 4000 then they will credit Nelson Capital, Parker Capital, and Rice Capital. Now how much will they do it? Well, for Parker and Rice, uh, for Parker and, for, let's start with Nelson, Nelson is 40%, that's going to give Nelson 1600 and for the other two, 1,600, not 16,000, 1,600. And for the Parker and Rice, 1,200, because they allocate um, their profit uh, profit sharing is 30%. Therefore, we got rid of the gain and we allocated it. 
Okay, so that's the first that's the first sale. Let's take a look at the second sale. And I'm gonna do two, then you'll be able to do the rest on your own if need be. They sold something for 12, it has a book value of 10. They sold it at again, I'm gonna do again. Let's look at the third sale. They sold something for 10, it has a book value of 20. Here they have a loss. Therefore, they debit cash, 10,000. They debit loss, 10,000. Then they credit the asset, for 20,000. Then they have to allocate this loss. They're gonna have to allocate this loss to three partners. They have to allocate the loss for three partners. Now, how would they allocate the loss? Well, how would they allocate the loss? They would allocate the loss uh, in the respective ratio, which is, in other words, I'm gonna show you the numbers because they might be different down the road. They'll have to debit Nelson, debit Parker, and debit Rice's Capital, and credit the loss for 10,000 and those accounts will be debited. Okay, so this is the journal entry in case you are wondering because I don't want to be doing the journal entry when I start to prepare the schedule. Okay, so they made four sales. Okay, and again, copy the data down because we're going to be using it in the next, in the next, uh, on the next slide. I don't want to be flipping back and forth. So they had a gain, a gain, a loss, and a big loss. Okay. So the partners prefer the cash to be distributed as soon as it's available. So that's that's what they want to do. Requ prepare the summary and calm firm in the, in the, of the periodized realization and liquidation. You should prepare supporting schedule. Okay, let's take a look at what we have. We're starting with beginning balances. 5,000 in cash, 60,000 in other assets, 20,000 in liabilities. And this is the respective capital and they all have surpluses. 20,000, 12,000 and 12, uh, and I'm sorry. Um, 20,000, 12,000, and 13,000. The first thing they did, they sold an asset for 16,000, and the asset has a cost of 12. Remember, they sold it for 16, it has a cost of 12, they have a gain of four. So, we received cash of 16,000, so we're gonna add cash 16,000, reduce the asset 12, then $4,000, and I show you the journal entry, will increase the capital balances of the various partners. Now the new balances, now they have cash 21,000, um, other assets of 48, liabilities of 20, liabilities of 20, then their capital, the respective capital balances. What do you think they're gonna do first? Well, before they distribute any cash to the partners, now they have enough cash to pay off this liability. So let's pay off the liability. We're gonna reduce the cash and reduce the liability. And simply put, the entry will be debit I'll do the entry here real quick. They're gonna debit, let's assume the liabilities are payable. Debit accounts payable, 20,000. It doesn't have to be accounts payable. Credit cash, 20,000. I'm just using accounts payable as a representation of liabilities. So liabilities are gone. Liabilities are down to zero. So basically we get rid of the liabilities. Now we have $1,000 in cash, 48,000 in other assets, and we have their capital balances. Now, remember, once they pay off their liabilities, every time cash is available, Nelson, Parker, and Rice, they're gonna be they want to be paid. They have there is a thousand dollar of cash. How are we going to distribute the thousand dollar? Are we going to give the Nelson, Parker, or Rice? Now we have to prepare what's called the safe payment schedule. So why do we prepare the safe payment schedule? This way we don't give the money to a partner that may have to end up giving us that money back. Okay, because we don't know what's going to happen. Okay, so we have one thousand dollar payment. What we're going to do? We're going to assume that this 48,000 is useless. This 48,000, it's gonna be sold at a zero, at a zero value. It means we're gonna have a loss of 48,000. We're gonna distribute the loss to the various partners and so, see who, which one of the partners will survive till the end. Okay, let's do this. So schedule one, here are the balances for Nelson, Parker, and Rice. 21, right here. Okay, these are the balances. Now we're going to allocate 48,000 of losses, 40%, 30%, and 30%. So we allocate 19,200 to Nelson, 14,400 to Parker, and 14,400. So we allocated 48,000 to them. Let's look at their balances afterward. If we look at their balances afterward, the only person, the only person, or yeah, not the person, yes, the only person that's going to survive with a credit balance is, is Nelson. Okay, the other two, they have 1,200 debit balance, 200 debit balance. What are we gonna do with those debit balances? We're gonna close them to Nelson. Nelson's gonna absorb them. So, we're gonna go ahead. Nelson's gonna absorb 1,400. 
and now their balances are zero and zero so guess what the first one thousand dollars since nelson is expected to survive to, till the end nelson's gonna get the one thousand dollars so who's what's gonna go this one thousand dollars gonna go to it's gonna go to nelson's account it's gonna go it's gonna go to nelson's balance and it's gonna reduce nelson's balance to twenty thousand six hundred okay and hopefully you can see that nelson will survive Oh, well, not necessarily, but notice Nelson has the largest capital balance, so there's a good chance he might survive the other two, although he got 40% allocation of profit. In terms of profit, he's going to get the money first. In terms of losses, he's going to lose because he's going to absorb more losses than them. But notice he has the largest capital, so there's a good chance he might he might survive. And between Parker and Rice, I want you to think about it, between Parker and Rice, who's going to survive first? Who's Well, well Rice will survive more because Rice has $13,000 balance, and Parker 12 and they both share everything 30% so notice before we even do the computation <coughs> I want you to see that Parker will uh, rice will survive Parker rice will survive Parker just so you know about the big picture okay so we gave a thousand dollar to to Nelson all right then we made another sale and the second sale we sold something for 12,000 it has a cost of 10 we had a $2,000 gain. That's from, this is sale number two. This is sale number two. We had a gain of 2,000. Therefore, we increase cash, reduce the asset, and distribute of the 2,000 gain, it's gonna increase their account by 800, increase their account by 600, increase their account by 600. Now, we have $12,000 in cash. Again, what do we have to do now? Well, they want to be paid. Once there's a cash, they want to be paid the cash. Well, let's see what's gonna happen. We're going to have to prepare another schedule. Here's, here are their capital balances, and we're going to assume this account is equal to zero. In other words, not equal to zero. The, all these, all other assets, they're going to be sold, and we're going to receive nothing for them. So let's start with the second schedule. So we're going to bring down the balances. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and distribute the 38,000 in losses. 40, 30, 30. That's equal to 38,000. And losses distributed that's going to reduce their balances they still have a capital balance whoops still have a cap still have a capital balance still have a capital balance still have a capital balance okay now what's going to happen is we're going to distribute it 6200 2400 and 3400 the respective balances okay so the 12000 would be distributed 6000 it's going to increase their balance increase their balance increase their balance now we no longer have cash okay and and uh, we have 38,000 this is the balances this is the balances in the non-cash assets and this is their capital balances we're gonna make a third sale a third sale the third sale we sold something for 10,000 but we are at a loss so we sold something for 10,000 we are at a loss so we received cash but we have a loss to distribute the loss is distributed 40 percent 10 percent uh, 30 percent and 30 percent we sold something for 10,000 that something has a basis of 20 we are at a loss loss is distributed 40 30 and 30 40 30 and 30 okay now we have the 10,000 now we're gonna have to we have to do payment to, to the payment to the partners of the 10,000 we're gonna distribute 40 30 and 30 so 10,000 40 30 and 30 then we're gonna have a zero cash again we're gonna have 18,000 left and we're gonna sell that 18,000 for 2,000 well if that's the case if we sold something for 18,000 we have 2,000 left we're gonna have 16,000 to distribute those are losses those are losses and those are sixteen thousand dollar in losses therefore what's going to happen after we distribute the losses what's left is 800 600 and 600 800 plus 600 plus 600 equal to 2000 cash and we're going to distribute the cash accordingly and we liquidated the whole company we liquidated the whole partnership the company so this is um a uh, a schedule uh, to compute safe payment this is a schedule to compute safe payment and this is installment liquidation if you have any questions about this topic please email me if you happen to visit my website for additional lectures or my youtube please consider donating um, and you're, you're greatly appreciated and if you're studying for your cpa exam i'm not sure if they go down if they go down this far but you need to know the simple liquidation but in case you don't now you know it 
Now you know it. Good luck and study hard for your exam.